Hi there, Loy Macedo, speaking to you from LoyMacedo.com. Who's Loy Macedo? Think Personal Branding. You know, I have 11 WhatsApp groups. So in one of them, uh, a young, uh, young man who is a follower of mine, he said, uh, you know, you're a coach. You keep giving people advice on personal branding, self-improvement, career, relationship, business. What advice would you give Andrew Tate? What advice? <laughs> if he was your, if he came to you, if he ever came to you, hypothetically, he'll never come. What advice would you give him? So I was like, hey, that's an interesting video topic. So I thought of 10 pieces of advice that I would give Andrew Tate if he ever came to me or if he is, you know, if I had to advise someone like Andrew Tate, I'm, I'm pretty sure he doesn't need to come to me. His Bugatti is his business, his money, his women is 100 times more. So obviously, why should he come million levels lower? But I'll give you these 10 points and you tell me, I want you to tell me, if the 10 points that I've given here are right or wrong, do they make sense or not? Okay, that's all I ask you. So, Andrew Tate, if you're watching this, my dear friend, here are 10 points which I'm giving you as a well-wisher. Okay, I'm not wishing you bad, as a well-wisher. And people are watching, you tell me if which one of these do you like, agree, disagree, and recommend. Okay, number one, the first advice to Andrew Tate is you cannot fight against an entire system and win. The chances of you being able to succeed is almost slim to none. You can say Nelson Mandela tried to fight a system, he won, fine, but do you know how many people had to die for it and how many years he was incarcerated? Okay. Mahatma Gandhi managed to free India from the British, but we see how many people died. We see how many people were ready to take action, not just you empty words, not just chatting, not just putting comments, not just hiding behind fake uh, identities. They physically were there for him. So it happens once in a generation, like Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Nelson Mandela. But Andrew Tate is not a Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, or uh, he's not a Martin Luther King. He is, who, come on, Andrew Tate, let's, let's be honest, man. You are a self-obsessed social media attention seeker who wants to make money and fame at any cost, which is why you went into pimping, which is why you showed webcam sex, which is why you showed girls and tempted vulnerable men. You didn't do it with uh, like a savior kind of character. You didn't do it like, uh, like Mahatma Gandhi would have never, do you, can you imagine Mahatma Gandhi and you in the same level? No. Can you imagine uh, Nelson Mandela and you or Martin Luther King and you? No, you are the, the bottom feeder, man. Come on. It's like uh, Mia Khalifa is showing her boobs a vagina and putting stuff in and getting men to have sex with her. <laughs> and then she's saying, and now today she's preaching, I believe in women's empowerment. Girls should value themselves, respect themselves, value their virginity, their chastity. I mean, would you take advice from Mia Khalifa? You wouldn't. In the same way, why should a young man take advice from you when your success, your money, your fame, the foundation is based on this? So you're not a Nelson Mandela, you're not a Jesus Christ, you're not a Mahatma Gandhi, you're not Martin Luther King. Okay, so let's keep that into perspective. So if you're going to fight the system, your character must be flawless, your values must be flawless, your past must be flawless, only then you'll succeed or you can't. And it is impossible to fight the system, especially when your shit is not sorted out and your shit itself is shit. That's number one. Number two, the path that you took was dangerous. Pimping girls, webcam sex, illegal kind of money. And then this social media uh, Discord server, join this room, pay $50 and I'll teach you how to be e-commerce, online selling, you know, Shopify and alpha male and uh, the secret room and sex with girls and you know the these these are very questionable um, things that you're doing and you're keeping it hidden it's not for public viewing it's you pay five thousand dollars and then you have to sign a disclaimer that if you reveal anything you will be sued for millions and millions of dollars with a you know star cast of lawyers why why what have you to hide you have something to hide because you know what is going on in the four walls is not acceptable. And there are YouTubers who have clearly shown, uh, clearly stated, Muslim YouTubers who said uh, they had uh, 
in the war room or something which is first to join is fifty dollars then to come for a vip coaching is some five thousand dollars and then there's a vvip different levels of selling which is like a sales funnel where you have the exclusive the exclusive of the exclusive and there after they discuss and all that then they bring the girls for entertainment it is there online you can check those videos they bring the girls for entertainment at night no cameras no nothing allowed so you are uh, kind of promoting a promiscuous life one man see you have to discipline yourself for exercise good you have to discipline yourself for your physique good you have to discipline yourself uh, for uh, business for money but not discipline yourself for sex for sex you can have with all the girls it, why the double standard why the disrespect to women i mean here's a simple thing can you show me one video where he has spoken about being a father to a child being a loyal faithful husband being a one woman man having a family completing your education getting good marks in the exam studying and giving value to the family getting a job and being able to support show me a, show me a video you will give me a four or six hour podcast where says those bitches should be this in the matrix is uh, you know chasing us all the controversial uh, sophisticated sounding jargon bullshit and then you will give me one small line be a good man what it's like six hours you are having sex with all the whores and all that and one video you are just praying to god and that's all we have to take that one second and the rest everything we ignore okay so the second one is the path you took was dangerous and it's part of your history and when you are in that path you will deal with dangerous people it's not the decent people that you deal with it's all the indecent ones who are into pimping girls drug sex this that okay number 3 is you know there is fame there is fame and there is money okay fame and money social media people love fame and love money if i had to choose between both i would never choose fame fame is a double edged sword the more famous you are the more dangerous it is why do you think daniel day lewis tom hanks uh denzel washington do not have a very active social media presence they don't show where they eat who they go out with who they are ha- uh, having a good time with no they keep it private you don't even know what their children are doing with school they are studying but then there are other social media stars who literally show you where they eat where they live what they do where their children are going what their wife is shopping everything you know the more you expose in today's social media day and age it's dangerous it's like uh, you know these idiots who mention when they are going for a holiday here in thailand it happened this guy literally used to mention where he is going what he is doing where his wife is going you know the minute he went for a holiday the minute he went it was so visible on social media robbers people who know him they robbed i think millions of dollars worth of his house everything ac the wall the brakes the cars the parts everything they took ransacked he lost around i think 4.5 million in terms of us dollars why because he mentioned everything also it is very dangerous even me whenever i go out for a business trip or go out anywhere i do not mention i do not tag it's very dangerous that is why fame is a double edged sword it's very very dangerous your children can be in trouble and nowadays they literally share all the data online the more data you share the more dangerous so fame is a double edged sword and andrew tate's brand is built on fame he literally encouraged people this is prove me wrong he encouraged people take clips of my video make it interesting make it shocking and share it and i'll give you points or clouds and you can um make money through what, what is that uh, tiktok or viral videos he encouraged this tell me if i'm wrong he encouraged this and every single video he had he had a team which was proved later with a video he has a team that makes it a video clip that makes it for tiktok instagram youtube shorts everything they are busy editing so he is no saint and if he was very particular about his brand that nobody should share uh, clips you, you know he keeps crying my four hour clip you will take 30 seconds you are the one who encouraged this you are the one to make your brand become the most google searched that is why so many people who are not andrew tate were not part of your team were dying to be part of this so called inner circle which is why your videos went out of control and which is why they took sound bites which made more controversy generated more controversy and you enjoyed it don't lie and deny it so fame is a double edged sword my friend number 
Jordan Peterson said this beautifully. First, you know, sort out your room. First, keep that room in order. Then go around changing the world. Your life, you don't have a proper relationship. Apart from your brother, you don't have a wife. You don't have a woman that loves you and sticks with you. You don't have a proper family life. You don't have a proper job. You don't have proper consistency. You're not staying in one place. You, there is nothing in your life that is stable. The only thing that is stable is controversy and traveling and holding the cigar and the Bugatti and the girl. And let's look at the end product. Let's look at the final product. Your life is a mess. You're behind bars or home arrest. You're, all your stuff has been seized. So, you know, the proof is in the pudding. So it clearly shows you're an utter failure. You're a self-obsessed, uh, attention-seeking guy who's beating his drum and saying, I'm alpha, I'm this, I'm, but you can't even get out of the house. Is that success? So when you yourself, your life is in a mess, relationships, love, money, success, legal, job, nothing is in order. What are you going around lecturing other people? Man? Okay. Number, number five. Please stop showing off. Stop. You know, your bloody videos. Oh, smoking a cigar. You wake up in the morning and the girl is giving you a massage. And uh, oh, you have that widescreen monitor. And then after you're sitting by the pool. Oh. I know many people say, oh, lawyer, you're jealous. Lawyer, you're jealous. Baba. Agreed. There's no female to give me a massage at home. I can go here. Somewhere here. There are enough and more massage parlors, which is hardly, ten, not even $10, less than that. I have one, two, three, four, uh, and there are one ultra wide monitor. I have six monitors. Do I need to show this off? Okay, barbecue. He's having a barbecue cutting and this thing. I can go expensive residence. See, there are a lot of people who can show off. Lots of people who can show off, but they're not showing off on social media. And those people who are grounded, who are not social media influencers or attention seekers, they don't display their wealth. The more wealth you display online, the more an empty shell you are. Tell me one thing. You are a normal person who's watching my video. How much does your CEO or your boss or your manager flaunt his wealth? Maybe they'll show the car. Maybe they'll show the house. Do they actually take a camera inside the house, show the bedroom, show the hall, show everything else? It is insane. You are stupid. People who value their privacy, uh, they don't do this. It is only attention seeking. It is only the social media, the small circle of empty shelves. These people with, you, you know, empty vessels that are making, like girls are showing, oh, my life is this and that. People who are stable and successful, who are educated, don't do this. And in Andrew Tate's case, fine, you're a social media guy, you have to show off. But now when you're in bloody trouble, why are you showing off? Why are you still showing off? Your life is not in order. Why are you showing off? Keep quiet, no. He still has to show off. And when you show off, you piss a lot of people and they're like, oh, you're showing off. Good. I'll fuck your life even more. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay. Number six. You know, when you collaborate with people, when you have good relationship with people, people work with you. MKBHD is a YouTuber. He collaborates with Dave Tooley, Linus Tech Tips, uh, Mr. Who's the Boss. Now, all these people are in the same line of work. They are competitors for tech reviews. But MKBHD is in good books with everyone, even safe, uh, safe uh, something, he wears glasses. And they all work together. They all promote each other's channel. In fact, when Linus Tech Tip, uh, I think one of them, even Unbox Therapy, Unbox Therapy, all of them are Canadians, Americans, and they all work together. When uh, Linus Tech Tips, uh, warehouse caught fire, or studio caught fire, all these guys collaborated to support him financially. So they work together as a team and they help each other, even though they're competing for views. Because I say the pie is too large, man. We can support each other. Even Justine, I can't tolerate Justine. Even she, Justine, the, these are all tech uh, YouTubers. But in Andrew Tate's case, he's pissing off every single person. He has pissed off Gordy. He has pissed off uh, other fighters. He has pissed off Logan Paul. Yes, controversy sells. He's trying to monetize on controversy. But when you piss off people, Deep down, they would want your downfall. Like Gordy, another YouTuber, he and him were fighting left, right and center. And then he said something about a Muslim joke. And then uh, Andrew Tate uh, tried to smear him as anti-Islamic or Islamophobic. And 
and uh, he thought Andrew T thought he had the last laugh. Now God is having the last laugh. See, when you piss off people, no, they would want your downfall, and that doesn't help anyone, man. So collaborate, don't propagate. Number seven is when you are the problem, when your life is not in order, when you have made problems, when you have a checkered past, lay low. Don't get people worked up because people will dig through your past. People try to, even, even though me, people do not know anything other than what I tell them. And I've been open and honest about my life online, where I've told about being a playboy. I had uh, sex with a lady boy, which I didn't know was a lady boy. Um, I spoke about my, my girlfriend, who I thought was 18, turned out to be 17 uh, with one more month to be 18. And I only came to figure it out after one month of being with her that her birthday was 18. I said, I thought you told me you were 18. No, if I told you I was 17, you would leave me. So I've been very open about this. And this was at the age of 31, nearly 16 years ago. Okay. Uh, I've spoken about being falsely deported from Dubai and I came back. They had to lift the case because it was a fake case. So I've said all this. People still, they cherry pick and they say he's a pedophile. I found out you're a pedophile. Admit it. I found out you got deported. They'll not tell the whole story. They'll just cherry pick this the title. And the funny thing is, I have told them the story, but they twist it and they put it the other way. People create fake accounts and say, I'm a pedophile. They, they, all that stuff that they do. Now, just imagine me, even though my record is not perfect, but I've been in the right. Still, people try to destroy my reputation. But with Andrew Tate, he has a litany of bad things. You know, pimping is not a uh, very decent, like Mia Khalifa doing porn. It's not a... Uh, now she does only fans. So it's not something to be very proud of. Or even if you're proud of, don't lecture people on their character. No? Don't lecture people on Islamic values or Christian values. No, you don't have the right. And that also, let's assume before he was a pimp and now he's become a spiritual guy. He is not a spiritual guy. He's still fucking around. So why are we uh, trying to patronize him? So the point I'm trying to give you is when you are the problem, lay low, my friend, lay low. Be nice, be polite. You still talk. The matrix is working against me and we are going to fight it out. And I destroyed CNN. I destroyed BBC. And they are still trying to bow me and control me. But I will never be. Shut up, man. Just shut the fuck up. It's so bloody irritating you. The matrix, the matrix, the matrix. The, I destroyed the BBC. BBC is still working. I destroyed CNN. They are still there. You're the one who's destroyed. You're the one who's housed the arrest. You're the one who can't get out. And people are saying, oh, he's, he has the courage to speak the truth. Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, Candace Owens, um, Donald Trump, all these people are speaking the truth. All of them. Why nobody is doing anything to them? Why only? Because they don't go around pimping people. They don't go around uh, having webcam sex. They don't target vulnerable people for money. They don't show, you know, sitting with their jock shorts and uh, smoking a cigar and taking a massage. No, they are balanced individuals. They do real stuff. They don't go around, hey, what color is your Bugatti? Huh? Uh, uh, uh. Why? This is not normal behavior, man. Then number eight, you're in Romania. And you're talking shit about Romania. The Romanian law, the Romanian government, the Romanian authorities, you are there in their backyard. And you're talking shit about them. I mean, yeah, being brave is great. Oh, courage is a man. But not using common sense is stupidity. You think you piss off, you insult the Romanian government, the Romanian law, the Romanian authorities and the Romanian underworld. You piss all of them off, disrespect them. It's like me being an Indian passport holder. I go to India and I insult the Hindu gods and I insult BJP and I insult Modi. What do you think is going to be my condition? Fuck, they'll bloody rip my limbs out. They will destroy me. They'll set me on fire. Imagine going to Pakistan and talking shit about Imran Khan or Allah or the Prophet. You'll be fucking destroyed. Or it's like, you know, I stayed in Dubai for 40 years of my life. I never once, not even once, not even blog or video said anything, even a complaint, even price going high. I never spoke anything bad about 
Dubai because when you're there, you're the guest, behave yourself. You are a guest in Romania. You are in their backyard. Behave yourself now. Okay. Next one. Uh, you know, he keeps talking about, um, I'm the most Googled man on uh, the planet. Okay. I have millions and millions of followers. I can rock the system. Yeah, the millions and millions of fans are called free loaders. Free loader. Okay. Small 10 year old, 15 year old, 20 year old, all the free loaders, they will scroll, scroll, scroll. And these people are not going to pay. See, Mr. Andrew Tate, not one of these millions are going to come and rescue you, which they have not. Not one of them is going to donate to you. Why don't you start a GoFundMe and see how many people will donate to you? Why don't you see who is going to leave their homes and come there and stand up for you and uh, guarantee their lives for you? No, this is all lip service. They'll admire you from a like and share. When it comes to action, zero. It is like having 5,000 friends on Facebook and thinking, see, I have 5,000 friends. But tomorrow, if you are to die, not even one will come to your... You know, there's a cartoon, no? We see... Uh, they show the illustration. Uh, the guy is lying down on the coffin. And uh, this guy is saying, oh, why did you have so many chairs? He's saying, yeah, I, he had more than 5,000 friends on Facebook. I thought some people will come. Not even two turned up. That is exactly how your life is. It's all empty. It's all fake. Just as you're fake and you attract fake people, these are fake individuals who will never do anything for you other than just brave keyboard warrior words. That's it. 20 year olds, 30 year olds. They themselves, their lives are not in order. And who are the ones who are following you? Mentally depressed, who have never seen a single female in their life, who are suffering from poverty, whose life is not in order, who are not studying, who are loose character, who are rebels, who are misfits. Uh, you get all the junkyard following you. And that's what they admire you. But they're not going to do anything for you. It's instead of having five, meaningful relationships of five meaningful followers you might have five million it's no use huh? and number 10 <coughs> see stop trying to show you're the savior of the world when the fact is you are actually a fake don't get me wrong you're not a savior you're not jesus christ you're not mother teresa you're not uh, martin luther king you're not Mahatma gandhi you, you are nothing. You are not even Elon Musk. You are not a leader of a country. You are a social media attention-seeking uh, empty shell. Even you are qualified. You are not a psychologist. You are not a psychiatrist. And you are giving solutions. Yeah, the dumb idiots will only follow. See, Jordan Peterson said it beautifully. I do not admire pimps. And that was his full stop about you. Pimping women is not something I admire. Making money pimping women. Making money through selling sex online to vulnerable men is not someone I admire. This is Jordan Peterson's words. And this is what you are. You are a person who was a pimp, who made his money pimping women, selling sex online, dealing with such kind of characters. That is your social circle. So you're not a savior. So stop portraying yourself as a savior. And even all this, the matrix and uh, I destroyed and all that stuff you're doing. You're not doing it to change the world. You're doing it for your own personal selfish agenda and reasons. See, end of the day, I have, I have told people, I, I, you know, you can make your billions and Bugattis and babes and bums and this and that. But we need to keep it real. The problem with you is, you're playing double standards. You're not talking what really has to be spoken. You're misdirecting and speaking of global issues and trying to portray that you are the one who's the savior. No, it's only these young men and women who are jobless, especially men who are really immature, who will follow and admire you. Real men with real families, with real education. They'll never admire you. And last and not the least, I'll tell you this much. Even if you have 100 million followers, 100 million subscribers, followers, not one or not a group will come there to sacrifice everything for you unless they get some benefit. They are all keyboard warriors. Nobody is going to come to help you because you have dug your own grave and you know that for a fact. And 
like I told you, when you are in someone else's backyard, don't piss them off. When you are in someone else's backyard, don't show off. When you are in trouble, don't make a big noise and hey, I'm this, I'm that. You lose. You cannot fight the system. Anyway, this is what I wanted to say, the advice that I wanted to give Mr. Andrew Tate. If anyone of you would like to share it with him so he gets some little bit of maturity, he grows up, feel free, tag him, let him know. This is the advice I gave him. And let's see, maybe he can turn his life around and make something worthwhile. He has incredible potential, incredible talent, intelligence, but his ego and his greed for millions, billions, fame and this and that, completely misplaced and you know, like they say, you know, that's the reason why he'll feel. Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Good, bad, ugly. This is me signing off. You guys take care.